Oh yeah. Feel that liver getting exercised. Oh yeah. Time of my life right here. Hey guys, Addicted Ace here, and welcome back to the channel in part two of our playthrough of Titanic Adventure Out of Time. Without further ado, let's get after it. So we've got to make our way up to the gymnasium to speak with the mysterious PP, our contact for our mission. And then we can uh, proceed to save the world. We can't save the Titanic. That's just a spoiler alert. I'm going to go ahead and get you get that out of the way. History hates that damn boat too much for us to be able to save it. Yeah. Take that. Oh yeah, feel that liver getting exercised. Oh yeah, time of my life right here. Glory be, it's about time. You're late. Another five minutes and I'd have canceled your mission. Jesus Christ, so freaking hot. You must be the one who sent me the card. Yes, I'm Pringle. Penny Pringle. From the Bureau of Secrets, you didn't think they'd plunk you down on this bucket of bolts and millionaires alone, did you? I'm sorry for being late. What a botch-up. Some idiot in the war office booked me into second, not first class, and I've had a fine time of it, too. The crew wouldn't let me in the first cabin at all. It's just today I located you. What did you want to tell me? Look at this. A German colonel named Zeitel. He's inspecting their embassies in Havana, Washington, and Mexico City. We know better. Ah. Colonel Carmen Sandy Zeitel. Ten days ago, the Bureau got word that Zeitel has in his possession a priceless copy of the Rubaiyat of Omakai, stolen two months ago in Paris after its purchase by a very highly placed member of His Majesty's government. What's Zeidel gonna do with it? It's your job to find out. His Lordship's watching this very closely. Very closely indeed. I wouldn't fumble this chance either, unless you fancy spending the rest of your career in some grotty Midlands back office shuffling paper about. What are the Germans up to? Have you seen the report? In your trunk? On the international situation? I'd jolly well read it if I were you. Is Zeidel traveling alone? No. He's with a protégé. Name of Hedelitz, I believe. The two spend a great deal of time in the Café Parisien. Nibbling pastries. Get into the wireless room. I don't know or care how. Officer Morrow wouldn't let me in. See if Zeitel's received or sent any telegrams about the Rubai. You've got a cryptograph in your trunk. It'll unscramble the German codes. You use the brains God gave you. Watch people. Listen. When you find the Rubaiyat, knock on my door. Which cabin are you in? Cabin F, 34. Use the second class stairs. You should be set. Remember, this is your big chance. Don't fail. All right. Commencing mission to stop Liquid from entering the ship and dooming us all. All right, let's go find Georgia. Whoa, too much. You came after all this time. It's Georgia. I'd heard you on board. Where have you been? I was detained. It's been five years. I'd have waited a lot longer to see you again. Why didn't you tell me where you'd gone? Dina hadn't a clue, nor did Jack. My letters were returned. I'd just like you to show up now, with everything such a beastly mess. You must help me. Help you? 
You've no doubt heard the rumors. I won't deny most of them. I can't. What rumors? Even if the money's gone, I won't give the diamonds to Charles. These are all that remains. My entrance for a new life without Charles or Sasha. Who's Sasha? Sasha? The owner of the Barbican Gallery. We're friends of a sort. He's sailing on the Titanic, taking some paintings to New York to sell. Please. I mustn't talk any longer. Take it. Take the necklace. It's my only chance now. Keep it for me. And don't tell Charles you have it. You can't know what he's like. Woman, I don't even know you. I'll take your necklace, though. Sorry, this section's off limits. Passengers aren't allowed on the... Officer Moro's in no mood to accommodate passengers right now. He's misplaced his binoculars, and he's in a right proper state about it. Off with you now. Okay. Oh my god, we're on the bow of Titanic. I'm the king of the world. Somebody come jack me. I'll be Rose. Somebody come jack me. Good evening. Third Officer Morrow here. I am sorry, but this is the officer's promenade. No passengers allowed. Officer Morrow? You're not Herbert Pittman. Herbert Pittman was the real third officer of Titanic. The sea appears calm. Yes, very calm. You seem a little worried about something. No moon. I don't like that. Can't see what's coming. No moon means surprises, as if we don't have enough already. Mr. Ismay, the White Star Line's president's on board. We're walking eggshells round him, I tell you. <laughs> Though that's nothing compared to the creeping about my brother-in-law's doing at the back. His entire London office is in an uproar. Could you elaborate? Tom works in the Admiralty. Seems our plans for troop deployments against Germany disappeared three weeks ago. Tom says the big boys are petrified the Jerrys will get wind of it. Could upset the balance of power. Politics. Desktop espionage. Bureaucrats. Pah. Give me the C. You can toss the rest. You don't care much for bureaucrats? Never have. Not since the war. They say war is unthinkable in this modern age. Then why are so many people thinking about it? Oh, what war was that? South Africa. Boer War. The officer was a drinker. He was drunk when they trapped us out on the veldt. On a moonless night, it was a massacre. We never saw them coming. Drink always leads to the devil. No wonder moonless nights make you jumpy. An interesting connection. For all I know, it could be true. A man's got his troubles, sick child, being away from home. But I hate whiners and apologizers. Well, thank you for your insight. Now may I visit the wireless room? Have a look, why don't you? Mind you, Phillips will have my head if he catches you in there. But I don't see any harm. Go on in. All righty. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Marconi International, Marine Communication Systems. Uh, this is instructions. More instructions for how to run the machine. Uh, Captain Antillian, 630 p.m. latitude, 49, 9 degrees west. Three large bergs, five miles to the southward of us. Regards, Lord. RMS Titanic, Greek steamer, a thin eye. Athenia, uh, whatever, uh, reports passing icebergs and large quantities of field ice today in latitude 41, 51 degrees north, longitude 49, 52 degrees west. 
Wish you and Titanic all success, Commander, Harmas Titanic, Captain Titanic, Westbound Steamers, Report Bergs, Growlers, and Field Ice in 42 degrees north from 49 to 51 degrees west, April 12th, Compliments Bar, RMS Titanic, America passed two large icebergs in 41, uh, 27 degrees north, 58 degrees west on the 14th of April. Uh, went tour five Lake Shore Drive, Lake Forest, Illinois. Arrived Chicago via New York April 20th. All love and support to you, Mac and Lily, during this sad and trying time. With much sorrow, Birdie, John, and Anna Lee Nelson. 22 Circular, Saratoga Springs, New York. Weather good. Titanic superb ship may arrive early. Frida and Marsh. Mrs. Breton, uh, Schuyler. 653 Fifth Avenue, New York. Edith will arrive. White Star. Pier Wednesday 17th. Much news. Can't wait. Daisy. Aha! This is what we're looking for. Alrighty. Come here. Don't you love this sea air? Ah, really clears out the sinuses. Max Seidelman, Philadelphia, PA. Buyer for Haymakers Department Store. The shoppy of Spruce Street, they call me. You a sporting type? You look like the sporting type. Come on down to the smoking room for a nightcap. Riviera's looking for someone to play a few hands of blackjack with. What do you say? Not much else to do. Not tonight. Brr. Cold as a cast iron commode. So... What do you say? Yes, I'll go. Great. First, let's swing by the Parisian Cafe. There's a man there named Zeidel, a German. Claims he's a business, but he's got something up the sleeve, all right. I know the type, believe me. Dollars to donuts, he's in some racket. So come with, why don't you? We'll hit the smoking room from there. Hey, Colonel, how you doing? Willie, like you to meet a... F a pleasure. Hedelitz and I, we welcome diversion during such an uneventful passage, don't we? Certainly. Willi is at the University of Vienna, dissecting children's fame. C culture and mythology, it's quite interesting. So only a junior professor, I tried to interest Dr. Freud. He's a genius, and I, I... Yes, I am sure, quite. On the passenger list, it says you embarked at Schauburg. Yet I have not seen you with the others. You were there, were you not? I was feeling ill. I see. You are British. Not so many of you in Titanic's first cabins. These days, most of the rich are Americans. Businessmen like Max. Tell me, why do you go to New York? I am on business. Business? How interesting, considering the British are not so good at it. What do you do? Me? Inspecting our embassies. Imperial Germany desires to make a good impression in North America. Willi is continuing on, to the west, uh, to conduct research on Aboriginal custom. The Indians, they are fascinating. Yes, yes, however, I place faith in science, not super. The Colonel was saying this wireless stuff's revolutionizing ever Sending messages to each other. It's the end of books and newspapers. Like the Titanic, a technological triumph. Here we dined in comfort while racing along at 20 knots. It's still tied to the outside world by the wireless. That reminds me, Colonel Seidel, when I go to send you a telegram, they told me it was to be delayed. There are too many messages. The passengers... I am sure our guests do not care to hear a detailed discussion of your encounter with telegraphy. Now, if you will excuse me... Please, excuse us. Won't you call on us tomorrow? Here in the cafe. The lens are taught quite passable for a British ship. Stop by. Willie and I welcome it most heartily. Yes, most heartily. And before I leave, you must allow me to give you some advice. But do not wander the ship. It is not good, I think, on a ship as big as the Titanic. Good night, friends. Good night. See? What did I tell you? What did I say? Them too. Up to something, I'd say. The brainy kid gives me the creeps. What a grind. He should hang out with that little blonde. She's a look, I tell you. Come on, let's hit the smoking room. I'll introduce you to Riviera. 
What do you say? Sure, I'll go. Great, go on up. I gotta see a man about a horse. I'll meet you in a few. Goodbye. Daisy Cashmore, surely you remember. Oh, you are naughty thing. Don't think I didn't know you'd snuck on at Cherbourg. Smethels told me all about it. The old boy's always dripping with news. I heard about Lord and Lady Lambeth. Oh, ruined utterly. Scarcely enough left for appearances, I'm told. I always liked Georgia. Married Charles for his name and his fortune, sensible girl. But she's made her nest. Now she must live in it. Well... I must go. Nice chatting. Goodbye. Off? On some lark, no doubt? You do keep secrets, they say. To the grave. Ta! I'm on A deck. No, this is B-Deck. Let me introduce you to Buick Riviera. Remember, he's French, and you know what they- Come here. Good evening, mon ami. Buick Riviera welcomes you to the tables. I am always delighted to play with friends of Max. You look familiar. We make a meeting before, Dovi, the casino at Monaco, New Mexico. I lived there once, in Diamondback. Such a town. So, have we met? Yes, we met at the Hard Drive Saloon. So this guy actually was in another game by Cyberflix uh, called Rust, A Tale of the Wired West, which I have not played. Um... But I think that game takes place like 30 years before this, so I don't know how old this guy is supposed to be. C'est vrai. Then we shall use my special cards. Good luck. You'll need it. A game, mon ami? You are the winner. Magnifique. You like to play again? No. I've got to go now. Bonsoir. Okay, so now we need to go to... Back to our cabin. C-73. So we can decode. This telegram. Oh, 
Oh, you make me do that all over again. Rubiot, hidden in boiler room three, coal shoe four, SB will deliver, painting after pickup will confirm, Zytel. I can't regulate the steam for boilers one and so I don't have time for you. You're where you shouldn't be. Get up top before you're kicked up there. Perhaps I can solve that problem for you. Oh, I doubt it. She's really acting up. See? Still working the bugs out. See for yourself. Have at it. There's a gauge showing the turbine's power out. The needle's got to move into the green zone. Over here. much smoother now. Say, since you were so interested, go on, have a, have a peek in the engine room. She's quite a sight. Go on then, have a look in the engine room. Damn, you can't even operate your own engines, no wonder the ship sinks. What? Nothing? Excuse me, I would speak with you. Forgive me, I am sorry to intrude on you, a person of such high station. I am Vlad. What are your troubles? I have many. I am leaving my home. I am a Serb and they have killed my wife, my children, the Austrian. For that, they will pay. But I do not want to burden you. Please, I need a favor. I have a friend in first class, in cabin A-14. Mr. Bobicon has a package for me. Can you bring it here? Can't you get it yourself? Me? Enter first class like this? No. They would catch Vlad. What's your friend's name? His name is Barbicon, in A-14. Tell him you've come from Vlad. He will give you other package. I wait here for your return. Your assistance will be repaid many for. Oh, 
Alright, we got the Rubaiyat. We're gonna need to stash this in here. Uh, he said A14. We'll go to the grand staircase. A deck cabins. Looking for a Mr. Barbican. You found him. Sasha Barbican of Barbican Gallery. Now, what is it that I can help you with? I'm to receive a package for Vlad. For Vlad? He's on board? Please come in. <laughs> he did it. I told him not to, told him I'd pay his ticket, but he was too proud. Such a tragedy about his family. They were with my mother's people. What will he do in America? Ask Vlad, I don't know. Here, his things. He'll be glad to get them. It's rather late. What happened to his family? When Austria took Bosnia, they were killed. Many were. With his family dead, America seems as good a place as any for Vlad. Good night. Good night. Enjoy your voyage. What time is it? Uh, this says it's about 10.15. Alright, so we got about another hour and a half-ish before all hell breaks loose. your package. Thank you. I must see Mr. Barbican. I have bad news. He will not be happy. I am looking for something. Something very important. But it's not here. You have seen a small... It is of no importance. Good night. Okay. Ooh, what have we here? The fancy dress balls upstairs, mate. Ready? Check out the toff. The upper decks bore me. All right. You've come to see her guts, have you? Who made your boilers? Arland and Wolf, they are. She's got 29 of these monsters. Where's Harland and Wolf located? Belfast. That's where they built the Titan. Not too fast, are you, Leadhead? <laughs> oh. Mm. I'll see you fired for that crack. Oh, you will, will you? And I suppose you'll be the one stoking the fires all the way to New York Harbor. You wouldn't last an hour. Bugger off! Up top with you, now!
Did you get it? Did you find the Rubaiyat? Here is the Rubaiyat. Let me see. That's the Rubaiyat, all right. Well done. Leave it with the purser for safekeeping. It shall be undisturbed there. I've decoded a telegram Zidal sent. Smashing. What have you learnt? Zidal's exchanging the Rubaiyat for a painting he will pick up later. More art? Zidal's no connoisseur. No, there's something about that painting of interest to the German High Command. I met a stowaway named Vlad. He knows Sasha, an art dealer. I don't have any information about Vlad, but the other fellow, look here. Zeitel's titanic contact is a London art dealer named Sasha Barbican. They say he smuggles art, and he's not above selling stolen merchandise. The files say he's Serbian, interestingly enough, with links to some shady Balkan groups. What do I do now? The painting's what Zeitel's really after. You must secure it. Where or how, I don't care. Just find it and bring it back here. Remember, leave the Rubaiyat with the purser for safekeeping. He might also know where the paintings... Sneak a peek at his cargo manifest. That should help you find the paint. Cargo stored somewhere beneath the forecastle deck. Things are thickening up quite nicely, aren't they? We've got to get our hands on that painting. Don't fail. All right, guys, that was part two of our playthrough of Titanic Adventure Out of Time. So now we've got the Rubaiyat. We're going to go store that with the purser uh, for safekeeping. Uh, and in the next episode, we will be going after the painting. So uh, do drop a like if you enjoyed this video. Uh, comment your thoughts of the game so far. Uh, and uh, subscribe if you are interested in seeing this playthrough completed. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.